Hello, this is just a, a quick walkthrough of ECM CLI. This is a command line interface that uses the ECM um, REST API endpoints to uh, create a sort of fictitious command line interface to some ECM tasks that I find useful. Uh, this is a very flimsy prototype, um, but I wanted to share some of the features to kind of give an indication of the direction that things are going. So to install the utility, um, I'm not hosted in the PyPy repository yet, uh, but you can always do a pip install from the GitHub uh, URL. Um, the tool requires Python 3.4 or greater. So in my case, I'm on a OS X box and I run pip 3.4 install git plus and then the URL, which is uh, the repository location. Um, once we install that and any dependencies that it has, uh, you'll have a utility uh, by the name ECM. And we use arg parse, so if you use minus minus help, uh, you'll get more detailed explanation about what the different options are. The way the tool basically works is that there are subcommands uh, that you use to indicate uh, uh, what resource you want to uh, you want to view or edit or manage. Um, some of these will use the remote uh, API endpoint that ECM provides. Some of them just pull off the router model, etc. Um, the idea is that they just they'll they'll do these operations against uh, all the routers that are in your account, um, and then at some point we'll probably have the ability to filter by group. Um, and then there's also the notion that you can specify a specific set of router IDs that you want to, to run your operation against, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Uh, authentication is done by using the login resource, and so it expects a username and password. At some point, we can probably extend that to use token-based authentication once that's officially supported. Um, it does store the cookies that result from that login in a, um, uh, a read-only file that's only readable by the user in your home directory. Um, there's probably a more secure way to do that, but for now, that's um, kind of my compromise. I don't store your username and password. I just store the, the session ID. So if the server expires the session, um, it will also be expired for the, the ECM CLI, and we haven't cached your, your password. Um, you can specify a username and password on the command line, or if you don't, it will prompt you for either one that's not provided. And upon successful login, it will cache those credentials. So to give you an idea of what that, that looks like, if we just do a, um, uh, a logs command with no login, it's going to ask us, I'm going to put my ECM login. Oop, and I messed up the password. OK. So we're logged in, and now it's fetching the logs for um, every router that's in my account. I have, I have three devices that are registered and only two of them are online. Um, and that's okay, this is, it, it, it doesn't matter if they're online in this case, so we're just going to, the, to pull down all the logs. And this will just kind of go through and, and page through until it gets all of them, and that can be kind of a lengthy process. The format is really similar to how the client formats the logs, except I add the router's MAC address here, and we don't attempt to do any fancy formatting with the dates, we just use the um, standard um, UTC printout for that. Um, if we want to get more help about subcommands, you can do the command followed by minus minus help and get an expanded level of help. So in this case, we can see that logs, I can specify routers, and these would be router IDs. Um, and then I can, there's a clear option which will actually um, delete all the logs for any routers that I've specified. If I haven't specified routers, it will clear logs for all my routers, so you need to be a little bit careful with that. Um, and then level, which is the, the log level that you want to filter by. Unfortunately, I can't filter by more than one log level right now, and I'm working with the ECM team to see if we can resolve that. Um, and, and if not, then I may just implement uh, filtering on the, the client side, but that's a bit wasteful since we'll have to pull down all the logs and, um, and then filter them on the client. Ideally, I'd like to be able to specify the levels and, um, and have them come in that way. Another feature I'd like to add to the logs is being able to um, tail or follow the logs, um, but I need ordering support to be able to achieve that too. And again, I'm working with the, the ECM team to see if we can get support for that. Um, to kind of demonstrate how some of these arguments work, um, I have a router whose ID is 669, so I can specify uh, router 669. I have another one which is 24 
1,400. So we can just specify their IDs in the standard Python arg parse um, syntax. Um, and then for level, um, I can either do minus L or minus minus level, and then the um, the level that I'm, I'm interested in seeing. Let's look at something that's uh, maybe a bit more obvious. So now we're showing, it looks like I've only got one warning message on router 669 with respect to setting its log level. Um, okay. Um, clear logs. I can clear logs for uh, just one router if I want. Okay, so we've cleared those logs, and now if I go back and ask for warning level logs, we can see that we got no results, whereas before we saw this one message um, because they've been cleared. Okay, some of the other commands that are implemented right now. Uh, settings is not implemented. Um, that's probably coming in the next couple of days. Uh, flash LEDs will, on this one, will be difficult to uh, show you since I don't have a video of my router, but if you could see my routers right now, their LEDs are flashing at about uh, uh, 200 milliseconds. Um, and that's that's for a, a, a wired connection. If I were over a modem, that may, be, that may be a bit slower than that. And that does use some bandwidth to do that, so if you, you don't want to just leave that running um, overnight if you've got a, a limited data plan on a modem or something to that effect. Uh, control C to quit. And um, a lot of these commands share some some of the same abilities to select which devices you're going to work with. Um, right now, that's just router IDs. Um, but in the future, when we have the ability to select by a group or by a sub account, um, that will probably be kind of a ubiquitous feature. You'll be able to select accounts um, for any feature that has router selection criteria. Uh, reboot is obviously going to reboot all of your routers, so I can um, very easily just reboot any devices on my network. Um, let's give this a fake router ID. Okay. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> no, <laughs> obviously we have some bugs, but this gives you an idea of how. Uh, their responses are handled. This is essentially the um, a pretty printed version of the uh, the error that I get from the ECM API. Um, in this case, this may actually be an ECM bug. It may be my bug. I'm not sure. I'll have to look at it with a little more granularity. Um, my favorite command that I have implemented so far is the, the WAN rate, um, probably because this is, for whatever reason, difficult information to come by. Um, there's a lot of times where I just want to see how much bandwidth I'm using right then. And this is a very nice way for me to um, to just see what my, my current usage is. So um, in my case, I have one router, which is uh, Home 1400, which is just an access point, so it's not using any WAN bandwidth. Um, I have an old device, which is offline, so we see the device is offline. And then I have my active device, which we're running this connection through. So if I'm to, for example, run a speed test in the background, um, we can, we can uh, affect those numbers. Okay, so now there's a speed test running. And aside from some ordering issues, um, because it's not stable and all the sorting is not stable, um, you can see that um, while I ran my speed test, my bandwidth went up to 73 megabits. Pretty good connection. That's it, I'll update more with, uh, with a better video when things get more polished. Thanks.